The Singer Heavy Duty 4452 sewing machine works like a gem if you thread it correctly. There's so many variables with the sewing machine. I'm going to show you the easiest way to be successful with threading the machine, winding a bobbin, and even using the needle threader on this machine. So we're going to go through all the steps in one video. So starting off, good quality thread can make all the difference in the world. So if you've got old thread from Grand Grandma's sewing box, let's not use that in this machine. You need to buy some good quality thread. The more you spend dollar-wise, the better it is. So if you're noticing it's fairly inexpensive to buy a lot of thread, let's not put that on this machine. You're gonna thank me later and avoid a lot of headaches. Next, take a look at the spool of thread. So this one has a little bit of a crisscross to the way that it is on this spool. This thread comes off this spool, laying down off the end. So when we do put it on the horizontal spool pin, we're gonna need a spool cap. So this spool has a fairly large end, so I'm gonna put a large cap on it. You're gonna find in your box, you also have a very small spool cap that would be perfect for something of a smaller end that you would be putting it on. It doesn't matter if it goes on here or here. Uh, so whichever way it goes on, just go ahead and continue to thread. Now you do have a vertical spool pin, so we will use that when we use a twin needle in this machine. Plus, it is actually designed better for threads that look like they are stacked. Stack thread looks like they're running here instead of like before the crisscross action. But if you have a stack thread, put it on here because this thread comes off the spool best if it spins. So if you're having any trouble with your thread, see if by putting it on correctly, following that little guideline, will make a difference of how it flows through your machine. So you can leave this on if you aren't using it. I'm gonna take that off because I don't usually use threads that are of the stacked kind of quality threads. You usually come cross wound. So for winding a bobbin, you are gonna to need to pull out an empty bobbin. We're gonna fill it all the way full on the bobbin winder. So first off, you are gonna find that you have little uh, numbered areas of where the thread needs to go and how to get it to go around certain things. So the first one, you're gonna come underneath this part here where it says number one. And then this part, the little kind of pretension, see how it's kind of spring loaded? The little picture has this coming around clockwise. But what I want you to do is make sure it clicks in to and underneath that spring. And it puts a little tension on it. So we call it a pretensioner before we come over to the bobbin winder. So if you've ever had bobbins fill up and they're kind of all loose and, and squishy, it's because the thread was not under this. When it is threaded correctly under the pretensioner, that thread's gonna wind nice and smooth and a little bit tight, not too tight, but you will have a nice smooth bobbin when you're done. Make sure you are using the bobbins that came with this machine. That is the clear class 15 plastic bobbin. So if you do need to get more, make sure you are finding that exact size. This is not a machine that you can mix and match bobbins with. So not all bobbins fit all machines, so keep that in mind. You'll notice the next little picture right here on the top of the machine has you find the small little hole in the bobbin. And we're gonna take our thread up through the middle and out the top. So we're looking to guide the thread through the hole and then pull out any of that slack from the bobbin. Then place the bobbin onto the bobbin winder and then push it all the way to the right. Holding the thread in your fingers, maybe wrap it around your fingers a couple times, hold straight up and step on your foot control until as it spins. And it actually goes quite quickly. So once you get going, you can wait till this breaks off or just take your scissors. And what you wanna do is make sure you don't leave any tail sticking up and out of the bobbin. So I'm clipping very close to the bobbin and then we'll just let that fill up and then I'm gonna put it into the machine next. So when the bobbin stops spinning, that is full as it will get. If you find it's not filling all the way to the edge, um, you can take a little bit of an adjustment and move this little white stopper just a little bit further. Make sure it doesn't overfill or get wider than the actual bobbin. Now here's a little trick. If you clip the thread, slide this to the left, 
when I lift this up and I come right over here and drop it into the bobbin area, it's exactly the way it needs to be lowered into the bobbin case. You notice on the door, it shows the way the bobbin needs to be lowered into it. So as a little reminder there, take your finger, slide it to the right, it'll pop the little door off, bring the bobbin and set it down. Now it's not done yet, so you do need to actually place the bobbin thread in, in the tension area. So see right about here, there's, it's about six o'clock. We're gonna bring the thread down through that area. And sometimes I'll actually put my finger on the bobbin so it puts a little resistance and you're going to slide it to the left right about there so it actually comes out about 7 30 so in at 6 out at 7 30 and then we're going to just let that kind of hang out here I'm not going to put this on just yet until we thread the machine next put the thread through the needle then we'll bring this bobbin thread up through the throat plate and with a little trick and then you'll be ready to sew. First, look for the little take up lever right here. This should be at the highest position. And when we turn our hand wheel as we sew, we always turn it towards us, reaching and bringing that needle all the way up and that guy all the way a little above the top of the machine will be helpful for when you thread the machine. So we just clipped our thread after we wound our bobbin and it's still around the little pretensioner. Keep in mind, this is only for winding a bobbin. So now we're gonna come back. Our spool of thread is on the horizontal spool pin. We're coming underneath the first guide at number one, then behind this, this guide that says number two, right here on the back of the machine. Make sure your presser foot is up. So reach behind the machine, lift up that presser foot before you go any further. If that foot is down when you thread the machine, the thread doesn't go where it needs to go. And then that leads to other problems. So uh, just make sure that you have it up. We're bringing our thread straight down that first groove. Here's where it says number three. And then we're gonna find where it says four, come underneath. And right here, if you stop and then bring your hand up with the thread and do a little flossing motion, a couple of times, you are making sure all the thread gets as deep as it's supposed to be. If you thread very gently down through these areas, eh, it may not work because the thread's not all the way in there. So that little flossing action guarantees that that area is threaded correctly. Next, after four, you're bringing your thread up. You're coming in on the right, over at the back and down on the left. It should hook into the small little eye. It's completely open. If you just bring it towards you, it slips in there. And then down to where it says six. Come behind the guide right here at the end of the housing. And then there's one more guide at the top of the needle. I'll bring it down just a little bit so you can see it's right here. It's open on the right side. So usually I just take my hands and bring that thread around. And then I'm gonna bring that needle back up. And now we're gonna use the needle threader. So we'll do a close-up video on how the needle threader works, but it pretty much is a little hook that is on this little arm. And as you bring your thread underneath first the side piece of the arm, twist that all the way to the needle, and then bring that up to where the little uh, hook is and then twist the arm away from the needle it will bring a loop of thread through the eye and you don't have to have uh, superman power eyes to see that needle which is awesome like i said we'll do a close-up video uh, on the needle threader exclusively so now hold on to the needle thread Bring your needle all the way down, take one full stitch, and if you watch right in here, it's coming down to catch the bobbin thread. See it kind of coming and sweeping across. Holding this, bring your needle all the way up to the highest position, including that take up lever, also at the highest position here. Then you are ready to sew. We're just gonna get a hold of that little loop of bobbin thread, pull it on out, slide both the threads down the center of the foot to the back side, put the door on, 
and we're going to set up for a straight stitch with a stitch length of two and a half. Take some fabric, fold it in half. We'll be talking about that too, is that if you are sewing, testing something, always sew on two layers of fabric. Next, lower the presser foot down on the fabric. Make sure there's fabric under the needle. Step on your foot control and let's see if the machine is threaded correctly. Okay, so when it stops, make sure that the needle comes all the way up and that take up lever also all the way to the highest position before you take your fabric out. Now there's a little thread cutter off to the side. So lift up your presser foot, slide the fabric out here and on the side of the machine right here from front to back or back to front, drop the thread over that little cutter and cut the thread. So you should see the same stitch on the front as you do on the back, you can't even tell which side I actually stitched from. And that means that the machine is threaded correctly. Now, if you're not getting that exact great looking stitch, just re-thread the machine again, follow those step-by-step -step directions. Make sure your bobbin's in that tension area. Make sure you're using good quality thread. Maybe put a new needle in if this is not a brand new machine and you don't know what kind of condition that needle is in. So there's lots of things we're gonna cover as we go forward with all of the videos on the Singer Heavy Duty. 4452. We've got links below this YouTube video where you can find all the rest of the videos in one easy to locate place on sewingmastery.com.